Welcome to the Memorial Family Athletic Innings with Halo Complex, home of your University of Tampa Spartans. Tonight, the Spartans welcome Swagler College. At this time, we ask that you please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Tonight's starting lineups beginning with the Saints of Flagler College who entered tonight's game with a record of one and one. Defenders a sophomore from Bel Air, Maryland, number eight, Blake Gonzalez. Attackers are freshmen from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, number nine, Trace McDonald. Defenders a sophomore from Colorado Springs, Colorado, number 17, Paxton Crow. Defenders are freshmen from Boy, California, number 18, John Kersey. Attacker is a senior from Fort Myers, Florida, number 24, Thomas Pritchard. Defender is a freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, number 48, Ori Emery. Attacker is a sophomore from Bel Air, Maryland, number 50, Garrett McNulty. Ford is a senior from Marysville, Maryland, number 77, Jake Griffin. Defender is a sophomore from St. Augustine, Florida, number 80, Ethan Lyon. And attacker is a sophomore from Western Springs, Illinois, number 91, Antonis Mazukas. Head coach of the Saints is Brian Duncan. And for your University of Tampa Spartans, midfielder is number three, Blake Stone. In goal is number four, Blake Omer. Attacker is number 37, Kenyon Birch. Midfielder is number 10, Matthew Beto. Midfielder is number 11, Trajan Canyon, Cannon. Attacker is number 15, Harry Kilkowski. Defender is number 36, Gunnar Gevlin. Attacker is number 45, Luke McEnany. And defender is number 53, Braden Crew. 
head coach of your Spartans is J.D. Clark. Yeah, I believe so. Good afternoon places. from the Namoli Family Athletic and Intramural Complex on the grounds of the University of Tampa campus. This afternoon, the 2-0 Tampa Spartans take on the 1-1 Flagler College Saints. I'm Bruce Wozniak, joined by Taylor Stolworthy on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. As you see, the Spartans with the opening possession, they are all in white. Flagler with the black jerseys and yellow shorts. First shot of the goal is in, and just like that, Daniel Fitzpatrick gives the Spartans a one to nothing lead just 12 seconds into the game. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just a testament to just how strong Tampa is. They're energetic, they're ready to go, and Fitzpatrick right out of the opening whistle to kick off the game gets the early goal. Well worked, very simple, nothing too flashy. That's the type of goal you'll love to see. And for Fitzpatrick, that's his second goal of the season. And now out to take this face off. For UT is Alex Poma. And they battle for it still loose in the faceoff circle. And the official right there on the spot awards possession to the Spartans. Starting goaltender for UT this afternoon, of course, is Blake Ulmer. As you see, the Spartans. Going back to work offensively here. Already with the lead. And Charlie Bullish looks for a shot, isn't there. Gives it instead to Gavin Bomstad. And now over to Fitzpatrick, who has the goal. Fitzpatrick puts his shoulder down, tries the lane, a bounce shot, scores again. And UT up two to nothing. Just 53 seconds in. Yeah, I mean, Tampa off to a very hot start and not a surprise coming in as one of the best teams of the nation. J.B. Clark, an incredible start for his Spartans career. And Tampa, you'd have to guess for the favorites entering today's game. And so far, they're proving why. And so we'll get this ensuing faceoff as the spectators continue coming into the stadium. The Spartans win that face off and now it's taken away by the Saints as they cross midfield and they'll get their first offensive opportunity of the game. Flagler up in Northeast Florida and used to these balmy temperatures, it's currently 80 degrees. As you see them setting up here on the Spartans end of the field, at least for the first quarter, the only shadows on the field are down there where the trees and the scoreboard are. And there's a pass into the corner and sent behind the net now and quickly over to the other side. And the Saints will reset up top and look to cross the Spartans line, beats the defender, long shot coming, scores! And how about that one as Flagler's right back in it, it's two to one. Great play, he's able to utilize the fake move to trick the defender, gets an open shot, and he's able to put it top corner. And I think that's the only way that uh, play was gonna get by Blake Ulmer. We know how consistent he is for the Spartans in net. Just a perfectly placed shot, and the Saints are within one. That's exactly what they needed after conceding those two goals early, and with only about two minutes through, you've already seen three goals. That was Hunter Turner on the faceoff for UT, and there's a pass that misses. Thrown by Jake Griffin was intended for Ben Byrne, and the Spartans going back to work the other way as Luke McEnany surveys his options, sends it up top for Max Maniello, and that's Nick Papa. His pass over connects with Owen Miller on the run, two defenders on him. And back up top to Papa, and over to Maniello, looking for some room, turns the corner, ducks under a stick, and sends a pass in behind the Saints net. Papa quickly over to Miller, has room, takes the shot, scores! 
Owen Miller and the Spartans two goal lead is restored. A well-oiled machine. That's a great way you can describe the Spartans offense. They're finding the right passes and letting the play develop for a nice open shot from a little range, but it was well placed and not much the Saints goalie could do there. And as the Saints finally got one on the board, Tampa responds with one of their own. It continues their great start for the Spartans with 12.25 left in the first. Oh, and a nice face-off win there by Hunter Turner and the Spartans quickly back to work offensively and McEnany wanted to shoot and the defender slid over quickly as it's Kilkowski back to McEnany. McEnany sends it to Charlie Bullish who had just stepped on as did his teammate Gavin Bomstad, who he gives it to and that pass missed intended for Canyon Birch and so turned over and Flagler Unlucky miss on that pass. I think that was a very high potential goal opportunity if he's able to get the pass and get the shot off. But instead, the Saints get the ball, and now the Spartans are going to fight for it. And the Saints ultimately come away with it. And they'll make some personnel changes as D'Ambrosi makes the pass over. Now they send it to the far side of the field and in behind the Spartans' net. Now to the near side. It's Trace McDonald. Quickly they reset up top. Flagler working the perimeter here and sending it back up top. And now over to Logan Tobias. Tobias sends a pass into the corner now quickly behind the Spartans net and right back up top they go. And is there a shot opportunity? No, strong defensive play by UT, and that was Gunnar Geblin who caused the turnover, and now back down the other way, Kilkowski with it for the Spartans offensively. McEnany looks back, Owen Miller just stepped on, has the ball, Miller puts his shoulder down, tries to get past the defender, gets help, Bullish shoots, scores! Charlie Bullish up top, over the shoulder of Paxton Crowell and the Spartans. Looking like their offense picking up where it left off the other day in the home opening win that we saw here over the weekend. Indeed, that was the game where Tampa was able to beat at the time number 18th, 19th ranked Wilmington from Delaware in a 25 to five victory. Uh, a win I'm sure coach J.B. Clark would be very proud of. And I know he'll be excited seeing this team already converting four within the first five minutes to start the game today. And here's McEnany again. McEnany fights off a check. Kilkowski with it. Harry Kilkowski waves his teammate off. Now sends it to Max Maniello. And this is Nick Papa. Over for Miller, gets past the defender, pass in the middle, wide open, Maniello shoots. Oh, that one went just wide. And a good look at the net for Max Maniello as UT puts it right back in. That's Birch. Canyon Birch gets in front and deflected, rolls. And over to pick that one up easily in plenty of time is Nick Papa. Kilkowski now. And there's a shot coming off the stick of Birch, and a save made there by Kroll. And now the Saints started up the field. Into that corner, now in behind the Spartans net, over to the far side. And up top, this is Garrett Moore. Moore with a pass into the Tampa end. McDonald. McDonald being watched there by Matthew Beto. McDonald with a nice little burst comes out in front. And that one's going to go back up top. 
And a long shot coming. Ulmer handles that one. And he'll settle it down. Now a long outlet pass is caught by Owen Miller on the run across the Flagler line. Miller, nice move. Pass to Kilkowski. Fakes it, shoots, scores. That's Luke McEnany. And nice transition there by the Spartans, and they convert once again. Heads up play by Ulmer to get the big pass to the midfield. He only needed the one to make it happen. They then converted once they got it over the line. And McEnany, he's looking like Messi right now, shrugging off defenders, making beautiful plays with the stick, and an even better shot to put the Spartans up by four. That was a really great play as Tampa will win the faceoff. And looking for some room is Truman Osborne. And now a pass up ahead for Birch. Canyon Birch, a little spin move. And this is Fitzpatrick who had the game's first goal. Daniel Fitzpatrick fakes a pass, now has an opportunity, and the defender closed back in. Fitzpatrick's shot goes wide and out of play. I think Fitzpatrick fooled even himself that the lane opened up the way it did. I think it definitely fooled us in the booth as well. And, and you have a spot like that. You got to take the shot when you're given it. And just misses, though. But Tampa regains possession. Bola should pass. Up top, Fitzpatrick wants to do over three defenders almost on him. And so Bomstad dishes it off for Bolish. Pass in front, scores. Canyon Birch. And the Spartans really finding their offensive groove here early on. I mean, I know the people that have come out here this Wednesday afternoon are just loving this exhibition of coal scoring prowess from the Spartans so far, as it looks like there will be a timeout taken. Flagler's going to call a timeout, and so we will step aside as well and be back with more on TampaSpartans.tv. college sports there's light at the end of the tunnel a return to normal and all we love about sports you've instilled resilience focus and selflessness in us we've put those lessons to work we've found strength and unity in each other you continue to take us places we never imagined you bring out the best in us so when we look forward we see the light at the end of the tunnel we see a better world for all of us and, and for college, college sports, sports. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. And we're back after the Flagler timeout. And not surprising as the Spartans were only halfway through the first quarter and already a six to one lead. Yeah, that's the exact start you want from JB Clark because on paper, the Spartans, one of the best teams in the country, definitely supposed to be better in a game like this in Flagler. But of course, you can always get a little too comfortable and find yourself struggling early on as you try to get settled in. But for the Spartans, no such problems as they've taken a very strong early lead right here. And the Saints shoot them in the, shoot themselves in the foot there. See the call against them as UT in possession again. And they fire it in behind the Flagler net. That's Kilkowski back there. And it's on the far side. Birch up to Maniello. Maniello weighing his options. Has Nick Papa with him. Papa will set the screen. Now he has the ball. Nick Papa fires from long range. Goes out of play. A 
A restart from the far corner. And there's a shot coming, and Crowell got a piece of that one, didn't even see the rebound, and his teammates do come up with it. And now he has the ball himself and outlets it quickly to the far side of the field. And I don't care if you are a school from Florida, there's no getting used to staring into the sun. Yeah, wherever you are in the country or honestly even the world, because we've had international teams come to the Spartans field before, the sun on the right side of the field is always annoying when you're attacking or when you're defending. And that's Trace McDonald sending it in behind the net. Saints work it around. And now back up top, Logan Tobias sends it back to McDonald again. McDonald has some room, ends up all the way back out at the restraining line, out at the far side of the field and into the corner. And the shoulder goes down, but the Spartans will not open up any kind of lane. You see, you see the shot from Tobias go out of play 21 on the shot clock for Flagler. And they restart from the far corner. And you see putting the shoulder down there was Jackson Day defensively for the Spartans. Nine seconds on the shot clock. And Flagler, they will get a shot off. Ulmer's there. And the rebound, he has to cover up quickly. And that desperation attempt almost fooled him. It did. I mean, when there's a scramble like that right in front of the net, it can be very hard to tell which way the puck's going. It can fool Ulmer. It can fool Tampa. It can even fool the Saints if they're not careful. So that's why it's always fun to see those types of plays in front of the net because with all the chaos, it's hard for anyone, even us, to tell what's happening. So the Saints still in possession here. Fresh shot clock. And there's a pass over for Trace McDonald once again. Now into the corner it goes. To the far side. This is almost like clockwork. D'Ambrosi with it. Saints almost seem as though we won't start our offense until we at least work the ball around the perimeter one time completely, maybe more. And the turnover here goes Matthew Beto. And he gets across midfield. The Spartans going back the other way. McEnany fires a pass over Miller. Quick passing. Shot scores. That's Canyon Birch. And after all that time that Flagler spent in the Spartans end of the field, it's that quickly that UT comes back and scores the other way. Yeah, it's, you see like 90 seconds you have Flagler just trying to control possession, open up an opportunity. Tampa makes a good play, gets the ball, comes up the field, and 10 seconds later, it's in the back of the net. And I believe it's now 7-1 Spartans as they continue their early game successes. And the faceoff at midfield. That's Hunter Turner once again. And a bunch of them scramble for the loose ball. The Saints come away with it. And it looks like Ben Byrne that emerged. And Flagler will make some changes as Garrett McNulty Holds on to it. Now he drops off a pass. That's Garrett Moore sending a pass over to the near side. And up top with it, Jacob Hauser sends a pass over, gets it right back. Hauser sends it into the corner now. Less than four minutes to go in the first quarter, and the Saints turn it over. Brady stole for his goaltender, Ulmer, and Ulmer will give it back. And stole with the pass up ahead. Here come the Spartans across the Saints line. Into the far corner and now behind the Saints net. That's Jackson Bashaw. Called his name a bunch the other day in the home opening victory. And good defense there, trying to deny Gavin Bomstad any room to work. Fitzpatrick has it into the corner. Birch to Kilkowski. Kilkowski wants to go one-on-one, -on -one, spins the other way, and turns around and fires a shot that will go wide and out of play. 
26 still on the shot clock. 3.02 left in the first quarter. And that's Charlie Bullish. Bullish spin move. And the defender working him over good. Bullish sends a pass and knocked down out of the stick of Gavin Bomstad and still loose. Picked up by the Spartans. Ultimately, now it's loose again. And the Spartans will recover. However, the shot clock runs out. And so the Saints will take over. And we do have a flag on the far side of the field. And we'll get the first penalty call. The official picking that up. This comes with 2.35 left in the first quarter. No wonder, is that a Spartan or a Flagler penalty? Looks like it's Flagler's. They've got a player kneeling over in the penalty box. So that'll be a one minute penalty for Ori Emiri. That's a one minute penalty and the Spartans will now get the advantage. Here they go working with the extra man. Owen Miller has it. Fitzpatrick, pass behind the net, Kilkowski. Quick ball movement by the Spartans. Miller, shot coming, Fitzpatrick scores. A laser to the top corner of the net. Pinpoint and accuracy that time. What a shot from Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick there, finding the top corner with ease. Spartans pouring it on, 2.16 to go here in the first quarter. And very reminiscent of the game that we saw here the other day when the Spartans won 25 to five Saturday afternoon against Wilmington. And now UT in control once again as Bashaw with it for the home team. I do hate to interrupt, but I believe for Fitzpatrick, that's a hat trick for the game. His third goal. So you mentioned he only had one goal, I think, entering today's game. Great to see him getting three already. Maniello finds an open teammate. And they go to the corner and now in behind the flag Lunette. Kilkowski winds up. Kilkowski bounces out the other side. Now he's backed towards the near corner. Now the pass made Birch, a save made there. As I believe Flagler has changed goaltenders. And it looks like that's now Nate Lair that has taken over in goal. And indeed it is. Spartans work from behind the Saints net. Out in front there's a pass and a shot coming and a save made by Lair off the stick of Birch. As it goes out of play. Sorry, I think the goal change is helping the Saints out a little bit. They're already seeing a few more saves in the back of the net. It can be very easy to get psychologically sort of deteriorated when you have a lot of goals being conceded early on. So it's sometimes better to make that change, even if your goalie isn't doing that bad, just to try to give him a breather and a chance to regroup because it is a long game. We still got a lot of time left to go as the first period is going to wrap up in just about 30 seconds. And UT may very well be intending to use all of this shot clock there's a difference of about maybe five seconds. Owen oh, Miller breaks in. That one goes out of play. 13 on the game clock, 18 on the shot clock. The Saints have the ball and a long pass. They should be able to get a shot off here. Five seconds still, four, three. And they do get one off as the buzzer goes to end 
the first quarter of play. It is all UT. And we'll be back with the second quarter here on TampaSpartans.tv. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Back live at the Namoli Family Athletic and Intramural Complex where the Spartans have an eight to one lead after one quarter of play and the teams of course have changed ends. The Spartans will now be going left to right and they win the face off to start the second quarter or do they as the Saints chase it down. And it looked like the Spartans had control and the Saints We'll get the first offensive possession of the second quarter as they make some personnel changes. That's Tyler Douglas sending the pass over and now relayed over to the other side of the field as Tobias sends a pass into the corner and now to the near side for McNulty. D'Ambrosi going one on one. No shot there for him, however. And they send it to the far side. Now back behind the Spartans net on the move. And they'll try this side. And strong defense by the Spartans. Can they cause a turnover? Yes. A forced turnover by A.J. Pascarella. And he starts it up. And this is Jackson Day. Day across the Flagler line. Connects with Kilkowski. Kilkowski behind the Flagler net. Still with it. Now takes a shot. That one's going to go out of play. And the Spartans put it right back in. And a quick attempt there by Canyon Birch. And it goes out. And the official there to award possession to the Saints. I think it'll be it, interesting to see if the Spartans are affected by the sun because they're now attacking and looking while they're defending directly in that direction. wonder if the Saints could try to take advantage and do a little bit better this period with the advantage. Hauser with the pass to Ty Tom and now sends it to the far side and they go quickly into the corner and behind the Spartans net. And they'll come back over to this side as Hauser sends it back up top for Tom. 
Over to the other side of the field. A lane opens, and there's a pass that's knocked down. Loose ball kicked out, and the Spartans come out of the pack with it. And Matthew Beto has it knocked from his stick. It's Bashaw, and this is Charlie Bullish. Bullish looks for an open teammate, settles it, as we'll see some personnel changes. Bullish with a nifty move, gets inside, takes a shot, and may have hit the goalpost. Birch with the rebound. Canyon Birch, as the shot clock was reset, looked like he was going to try to shoot again quickly. Manny Yellow does, and that one goes out of play. Up top is Charlie Bullish. Across the Flagler line, bumps with the defender, drops it back. Manny Yellow wanted to shoot, now he does. And that one goes wide, and it goes out behind the Flagler net. Kilkowski on the restart. Kilkowski comes around front, takes a shot, and Lair got a piece of that one as it goes out of play. And Taylor, you're right, Nate Lair has been getting tested enough that you can tell he's starting to get into the flow of the game in the Flagler net. Yeah, and that's actually, I think, something that's good because if you try something new out and the goalie does well, that could be a bit of a learning experience saying, hey, that's really good. And and that would kind of be, I think, a little unfortunate for a crowd because maybe it could start a little position battle throughout the course of the season especially since it's early on and starting positions aren't necessarily locked down where you'd see a change like this not happening closer to the playoffs as Tampa then immediately gives us the commentator's curse by getting Lair's first conceded goal. Max Maniello with the goal. But just to continue that thought, Nate Lair, obviously a move by the coach to try to shift momentum somehow and it seemed like he was giving his team a little bit of a shot in the arm of course, he can only do so much. It's a team sport, and they've got to defend in front of him. And, of course, the talent that Tampa has, we see it up and down the lineup, and Maniello had a wonderful look at the net there. And he's going to convert more times than not on opportunities like that as UT goes into a 9-1 to lead. And the Saints, they throw that one away. It would be a foot race. And they do get to it first. Over to the far side. And up top with it, Trace McDonald. And he gets it right back. McDonald being watched by Jackson Day. Far side of the field. And there's a pass that's dropped, picked right back up by Logan Tobias. Now down behind the Spartans net, there's a shot that's going to go out of play. Trace McDonald. Good idea with the shot, but just a very tough angle. And I think Ulmer had that cover, even if it was on target. Saints. For all intents and purposes, unguarded behind the Spartans net. You see Brady Stoll waving his stick in the goal crease for UT. Defensively, they score. And a nice effort there. And give credit to Antonis Makuzas. As I had said, they left him alone there and decided, I'm going to try this one myself. Sometimes it's plays like that that can work out, even though he was closed very well down by the Spartans. Number three, Brady Stoll. He was able to find the window to get past Omer and give Flagler their second goal of the game. Alex Poma being opposed by Jake Griffin on this faceoff. The ball's out, and Griffin comes out with it. Griffin with a good burst of speed, takes the shot, scores! How's that for winning the faceoff and then 
taking it right in for a goal. There's also a flag on the play, so we'll have to wait and see. I don't think that'll get called back, and I'm not sure whether that'll still be applied for the Spartans, but great job by the Saints in the faceoff. There's actually two flags. Ooh, so it looks like could have a one player from each team or two Spartans or two Saints going off there. But heads up play off the faceoff and was able to bounce it off the posts to get it in. Comes with 9.36. Remaining in the first half. 9-3 to three is our score. And looks like Matthew Beto for the Spartans. And a two-minute call against him. That's exactly what the Saints needed. They got two quick goals, and now they have a man advantage. Try to take advantage of the situation here they can score another. They'll still be five goals behind, but that'll do a lot of help as they continue through the second quarter and could be what they need to try to get back into this game. Conley Stone for UT, however, and the Spartans score. And how's that for backfiring? You get the momentum of the couple of goals, you get a penalty call against UT, and who scores? UT. I have a feeling the Saints fans would not have liked me, uh, liked my previous sentence leading to that goal. I'm very much a curse for their team so far, jinxing the first goal against the new goalie, and now jinxing the man advantage with a Spartan shorthanded goal. So Poma for the Spartans will be opposed by Matt Matrega on this faceoff. And nicely won by Poma. And the Spartans can work to kill more of this penalty against Matthew Beto, still 138 remaining in it. And Fitzpatrick with it on the far side. And with this big a lead, Taylor, let's see if the Spartans use as much clock as they can to kill off the penalty instead of looking for more offense. Yeah, I mean, I know this is a type of team that likes to stay on the attack, but they're up by seven. They can afford to rest for a few minutes and potentially just give their own players a bit of a chance to rest. They've been moving at 100% maximum pace the entire time so far. This kind of gives them an opportunity just to hold it and continue to go right when they're back at even strength. That's Daniel Fitzpatrick with it. Fitzpatrick sends a pass into the corner now for Canyon Birch. 20 on the shot clock. Up for Charlie Bullish now. And Bullish brings it over to this side of the field. 10 on the shot clock. Wide open shot coming. Scores. So they get the best of both worlds as Nick Papa scored. They killed off tons of time and end up with a goal out of it while still being a man down. The Saints will get a face off. Potentially 30 seconds left to convert with a man advantage, but... That would only be a consolation for this uh, penalty period as the Spartans have recorded two shorthanded goals. Wow. Score now 11-3. to three. And we do apologize if you're watching uh, live stats. Uh, they haven't been updating perfectly so far. It is currently 11-3. to three, And I know it might be one of the Fitzpatrick goals that are missing. I can double check and update. But as it'll say 10-3, it is currently 11-3 as I believe our scoreboard says here live on stream. A loose ball, and the Saints come out of the pack with it. And now the Spartans working to jar it free as there's now 10 seconds remaining in the penalty to Beto, and UT will kill it off. As you see Jackson Bashaw with it. And how about that? They kill off the two-minute penalty to Beto, and get two shorthanded goals during it. There's 7.25 to go in the first half. Charlie Bullish sends a pass over. And that's Gavin Bomstad takes a shot that goes out of play. Canyon Birch. From behind the Saints net, Birch takes a shot. That one's going to go out of play. 
Still 36 on the shot clock for UT. The Saints, I mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, a one and one, one lost record thus far this season. They lost their season opener, a tough one goal decision at the hands of Embry Riddle, 11 to 10. And then this past Friday, they won 18 to 10 against Palm Beach Atlantic. As you see the ball bounce out of play on the far side of the field and the official right there on the spot. Great hustle there from both players making the dive for it. The Saints will get possession and now a chance to get back on offense. That's Tyler Douglas over for D'Ambrosi. Gives it now to Tobias who sends it into the corner and in behind the UT net they go. Pass over back to this side of the field, D'Ambrosi. And up top, once again, to Tobias. Gives it back for D'Ambrosi, who crosses the line, stops. Looks to go one-on-one -on -one against Day. And opts for the pass instead. Behind the Spartans' net it goes. Good ball movement here by Flagler. 30 seconds on the shot clock for them. Puts the shoulder down, and good moves inside. They score! And a well-deserved goal, great play there. They've been fighting, they've been playing, and they're able to come up with one here. A nice, he played solo shot, sliding through the Spartans' defense, and they get it past Omer to get them back within a few goals. It's still a very comfortable Spartans lead, but I know they'll be happy to be scoring more goals this period after just one back in the first. So 11-4. Spartans leading with 538 remaining in the first half. And now the faceoff. And Alex Poma says, look what I found. Here comes a shot from Canyon Birch. And Lair may have gotten a piece of that one. Possession remains with UT as Luke McEnany puts it in. And Pascarella. Shook off a check, sends it back into the corner. And over for Bashaw. Jackson Bashaw behind the Saints net. And up top, Max Maniello. Maniello's pushed, carries on. And the Spartans go back up top again as Owen Miller is double teamed. And a long shot coming, a save they there by Lair on the shot by Papa. And Lair settles it down. Almost got away from him, but he got a good job to get back in front of it and make sure any Spartan that was in front for the rebound wouldn't able, wasn't able to get it. Back the other way goes Flagler, Garrett Moore. Pass into the corner. And that's Makuzas who has one of the Saints goals. Being watched by Brady Stoll. Makuzas, a couple of spin moves, balls on the ground, and picked up there by Braden Forrest. Ty Tom sends a pass into the corner, and the Saints set up deep behind the Spartans' net. 22 on the shot clock and sent in behind the Spartans net again. There's a shot. Ulmer got a piece of that one. The rebound and still not controlled by either team. And finally, the Spartans able to pick it up as Beto sends a long pass up ahead that connects with Braden Williams. Pass shot and Lair with the save. And now Flagler will go back the other way, or at least endeavor to as the Spartans applying some good pressure. Now there's a flag thrown, and we're going to have a penalty called against UT. 
as it carries on in their end of the field, their defensive end of the field. The Saints send it back up top. Ty Tom looks over to his sideline and sends a pass over to the far side. Now in the corner and whistles as Flagler is going to take a timeout. We'll do the same and we'll be back with more here on TampaSpartans.tv. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Back live, and the Spartans penalty is a 30-second call against Jackson Bashaw. And so Flagler, following their timeout, will go to work with the extra man. Two minutes, 38 seconds left in the first half. And they work it to the far side of the field. And there's a pass down low. No shot there. Pass and... Dropped momentarily by Logan Tobias. And he gets it right back. And just like that, the penalty is already over with to Jackson Bashaw. And tough sledding, Taylor, for Flagler when they've had the extra man. Yeah, I think they can say at this time they didn't concede a shorthanded goal but the Spartans is playing solid defense, and they've been so deadly in transition. That's the reason they've been able to generate very dangerous attacking opportunities right when they've won the ball back. It's been something the Saints have struggled to deal with, and the Spartans have just taken full advantage. In a way, that kind of helps uh, the Spartans capitalize on those shorthanded spots, and they've also just scored again. This time, it's Jackson Bashaw who just got out from the penalty spot to convert here to make it 12-4. I'm tempted to say when it rains, it pours, but with a beautiful sunny afternoon, it would be quite a contradiction. But speaking metaphorically, of course, as the Spartans just continue to pour down the offense. I'll say if this was a rainstorm, it would be a torrential downpour for sure. As again, they're in the double digits, an eight point lead. I know J.V. Clark's just loving this so far. But the big question is, what criticisms would you give the team entering halftime? Would you say, hey, we're conceding too many penalties? That would be the only thing I can think of. Well, we may end up seeing the same scenario that we saw here the other day, which was J.B. Clark giving some time to players who otherwise normally wouldn't see the field. And I think you maybe start talking to them and remind them how important it is to go out there and show the best that they have because... Now, this is a Spartans team that only has 21 upperclassmen, and I'm excluding the grad students when I say that. Six juniors and 15 seniors. They have 33 underclassmen that's broken down by 16 freshmen and 17 sophomores. And if they're going to be the Spartans of the future, J.B. Clark needs to see a lot from them. And I don't mean in terms of production, but he needs to get, quote-unquote, some film on them. And this is their opportunity to say you can count on me as I move through the program. Indeed, and a game like this is the perfect way where if the Spartans continue to have a very solid lead in the third quarter, that's where you can run players who are maybe second or third on the depth chart. 
and get those freshmen those opportunities because that's all you need. Sometimes you'll find a diamond in the rough off the bench and say, hey, this guy's really good. Let's get him more time. And the worst case scenario, you get future Spartans some extra time in an actual game because you can practice all the time. You can do scrimmages as much as you want. Nothing beats real game experience. Yeah, and I think it's getting in the game and playing composed and not getting yes. all caught up in the excitement of getting some game time. And and even better is in a game like this, it's a very comfortable lead for the Spartans. There's not a lot of pressure. So if you make a mistake, it's not like, ooh, that's a big thing that'll tell the story of the game. Well, the penalty was against Garrett Moore for Flagler as the Spartans work with the extra man here. And just 25 seconds left in the first half. And the Saints, let's see if they can get down the other end of the field and get one more shot off before the half expires. And here they go with a burst of speed across the UT line. Shot coming is deflected. And the Spartans, can they pick up the loose ball? No, the Saints get it right in front. And no shot there. And UT does come away with it after all as the horn goes to end the first half of play. And it was all Spartans as they will go into the locker room with a big 12 to four lead. And we'll be back with the third quarter following halftime here on TampaSpartans.tv.
And we're back, ready to start the second half of play. The Spartans in a big 12 to four lead. They are out shooting Flagler 23 to nine and have won 12 of 18 faceoffs. And Daniel Fitzpatrick with three goals, Canyon Birch with two, and then a long list of players with single tallies. As you see, UT controlling the second half faceoff. That's Charlie Bolish. And Bolish sends a pass over to the far side. That's Fitzpatrick. Now Bolish tries to get around his check and good defensive help. There's a shot, scores! Luke McEnany just that quickly, 28 seconds into the third quarter. And UT picking up where they left off in the first half. Second time they've had a goal in under 30 seconds. We saw the Spartans kick off the game with a goal in 12 seconds. And now to kick off the second half, they've done it in 28. And the Spartans are now, of course, as you mentioned, up by nine. But it's, cr it's almost mind-blowing how quickly this team can just get a dangerous offensive chance and usually convert it. And if I'm not mistaken, I think UT had two goals in the opening minute of the game. Yeah, I believe so. There's still time as the Spartans win the faceoff. And there's a pass now. Trajan Cannon for McEnany. McEnany looks as just stepping on was Gavin Bomstad. And now Fitzpatrick sends a pass over. Bullish bumps with the defender, comes in, sends a pass in behind the net. And now Bomstad with room scores up in the top corner. And by the way, it looks like we have yet another Flagler goaltender, as I believe that's Wade. Oh, it's not. I thought I saw Zero, who is a goaltender for them, but hmm. it is still Nate Lair. I can check with the binoculars actually really quickly, but... I do think they'd keep Lair in this stage of the game. So 103 into the third quarter. Yep, UT it is makes it a 10 goal lead. Yeah, I can confirm that is still Lair and just three seconds away from two goals in the first minute again. And Beto gives it to Almer. And Blake slowly trots it up near the line, gives it to Beto. And up ahead. That's A.J. Pascarella. And Nick Papa with it for McEnany. And now Papa up top to Max Maniello across the Flagler line. Falls down and lost possession. And Flagler says, we'll take it any way we can get it at this point, and now a long pass. And here go the Saints across midfield. Dropped and then picked right back up by McDonald. And sends a pass over. Brady stole there defensively. Does he cause the turnover? He does and picks it up himself. Stole being chased and really has to work for it. Good pressure being applied there. And I believe that was Trace McDonald just absolutely giving it everything he had. As the Spartans go back the other way, Maniello looking for room, takes a shot, and Lair stopped that one. There's a loose ball picked up by the Saints going back the other way. On the run across the Spartans line. There's a shot. That one's going to go out of play. And we're gonna have yet another penalty called as it was quiet in the early going and all of a sudden the officials have really let us see that flag quite a bit more often as this game has unfolded. I think at this stage, the referees just don't want things to get too dangerous, too physical, especially since it is a relatively comfortable Spartan lead. They don't want teams to get too aggressive out there. They don't want teams to get frustrated. They wanna just make sure they're keeping good discipline, and for the Spartans, it will be a penalty. I'll quickly check that number because I've got these binoculars that are in the booth. It is Nick Papa, number 33. 
He'll be in the box for just 30 seconds. The Saints will be able to continue that attack. Or maybe not. Spartans have picked it up. And they still battle for it. Now the Saints come out with it, take a shot, and it's going to go out of play. And so 13 remaining on the call against Nick Papa. And the Saints on the restart to the far side. And they were looking shot. Now they pass it, and there's a shot coming that Ulmer handles nicely. And the penalty expires against UT, and Beto missed that one. And now he picks it up. And this is Jackson Day. Day stops, spins the other way, and turns again. And now UT, Charlie Bolish leading the way. Sends a pass over for Bomstad. Bomstad beats his check, takes a shot, and scores! Gavin Bomstad as UT putting on an offensive clinic here this afternoon. And the lead now increases to 11 at 15 to 4. It's unassisted as now we're going to see Ethan Toshev, who we did see taking some face-offs the other day. And I believe that's Matt Matrega for Flagler. And Toshev wins that one. And flips it over for Kevin Stiff. And there's a pass that misses A.J. Pascarella, and so it's turned over. On that previous goal by Bombstead, that was his second of the game. And I think he's on the bench, but might be soon coming back into the game. Maybe. Might see Clark making a couple more changes to mix in some of the other younger players, some of the freshmen and sophomores that haven't solidified a starter role yet. Like you were hypothesizing start of the quarter and end of the first half. This is Garrett Moore for Flagler. One-on-one -on -one against Day. Takes a shot. Ulmer with a nice save there. And now Ulmer with the outlet pass. And away go the Spartans. It's Braden Williams. Jackson Day dropped it back for Pascarella. Over for McEnany. Into the corner now. Harry Kilkowski. And to McEnany. UT making some personnel changes as McEnany holds onto it. And good defense being applied there by the Saints as Owen Miller flips off a little pass inside Canyon Birch. Nice save there by Nate Lair. Wasn't fooled by the backhander. Great job by Larry to keep his composure. That's a point-blank shot, and it's so easy to get fooled by those simple movements since you need the split-second reactions. And so Flagler on offense here as McDonald being watched by Braden Krumey. And Kevin Stiff chases... And the Saints will have to reset up top. Braden Forrest with it. Forrest tries to get past Miller. Drops off a pass. There's a shot coming, and it's going to go out of play behind the Spartans' net. And the official there on the spot to call possession for the Spartans. Brady Stoll will put it into play. Ulmer walks it up to the line, sends a pass up ahead. It's Trajan Cannon. And this is Charlie Bolish. Fires a pass over for Fitzpatrick, who's got a burst of speed. And going down, what a goal by Owen Miller. Wow. And how's that for perseverance? 
falling and firing. What a goal. He's hit, and while he's falling, he says, hey, you know what? I might as well try to take the shot, and he puts enough power to beat Lair by a mile. A beautiful play, and we've seen a lot of good Spartans goals in this game, but that was probably the best one we've seen yet. Ethan Toshev out there for UT against Jake Griffin on this faceoff. Ball is out. And the official there to make the call. And as you see, the Spartans in possession here. That's McEnany. A.J. Pascarella going off the field. Fitzpatrick. He has three goals and an assist. And that's Kilkowski. Up top, Charlie Bolish across the line. Bolish, no room for him. And he hangs on now, sends a pass. And up top now, we've got another flag thrown. And a good save there by Lair on the shot by Bomstad. And let's see what the call is going to be here with 7.39 to go in the third quarter. And the Spartans in a big 16-4 to lead. Looks like number 28 on Flagler will get the penalty. It's going to be a one-minute penalty as well. So Brendan Watson, he'll be out for 60 seconds. The Spartans will get the man advantage. They'll immediately work it around. That's Jackson Bashaw for Owen Miller. Fitzpatrick sends it to Kilkowski behind the net. The other side shot coming, and Lair got a piece of that one. And Kilkowski on the restart for the Spartans. Up top now, Bashaw for Miller. Quick passing. Fitzpatrick missed it, and he's able to scoop it up. Fitzpatrick on the run. Fires a pass over. And Miller, a nice job to corral that one, although his shot will go wide and out of play. 24 remaining in the penalty against Brendan Watson. Fitzpatrick, that one goes high and out of play. Looks like it got tipped on that play because it had a very high arc. That's a very not a typical miss. You wouldn't see a lot of those misses go straight up. So I think it probably ricocheted off a defender. It's Patrick again. This time he scores. And Lair frustrated with that one as Fitzpatrick gets goal number four on the afternoon. And that will be a man advantage goal as there were still seven seconds left in the Brendan Watson penalty. Fitzpatrick five points on the game. Really good stuff from him, and that goal right there, just top corner, perfectly aimed. And you know Lair's disappointed because that's nearly an impossible shot to save with that precision. Ethan Toshev for UT, opposed by Jake Griffin again. And the ball's out, and a nice job there, Truman Osborne, to pull it down for the home team. And Osborne running this one out. Gets in between two Flagler defenders. They're able to cause the turnover, though, and back they go the other way, led by Griffin. Griffin has room, takes a shot, scores! And that's twice in this game. One time he won the faceoff and took it in and scored on his own, and that one there may not have necessarily been on the faceoff, but another single-handed effort from Jake Griffin. Yeah, he does a good job there getting through the Spartans' defense. They're playing a little conservatively, a little passively, just trying to make sure there's no one-two touches to try to get by Ulmer. And he says, well, thanks for the space. I'll take the shot. And he's able to convert, making it a 17-5 game. So Griffin with two of... Flagler's five goals. And 
and the Saints with the ball again. And 5.19 p.m., if maybe you've just gotten home from work and are joining us late, UT led this one 8-1 to one at the end of the first quarter and 12-4 to four at halftime. As you see, Flagler with a shot there that Ulmer got a piece of. And the second quarter, Spartans only outscored Flagler 4-3. to three. But between that 8-1 to one first quarter and then 5-1 to one so far here in the third... The 12 goal differential that's currently up on the scoreboard. And that's Evan Gibbs with the ball for UT. Gibbs looks. And now Kellen Hoke across the Flagler line. This is Grant Green. Green with a pass over for Gibbs. And now for McEnany. In behind the net is Nicky Palermo. Palermo with a little spin move to get away from the defender. They catch up to him and he's met back there. Nice job to hold on to it though. And Palermo still working pass in front. There's a shot, scores! And good work by Nikki Palermo to make that possible as Canyon Birch gets the goal. Great job by Birch to fight off the defenders. They were up close and personal. Didn't have a lot of space to get the shot off, but he finds just enough to get it by Lair and Spartans up again by 13. That's their sixth goal of the period. So we'll see Ethan Toshev here again for the faceoff. And Matt Matrega this time for the Saints. And Toshev trying to chase it down. He goes down himself. And here comes Pascarella for the Spartans. And a save made there by Nate Lair. Game of inches. That one was dangerously close. Thought I almost saw a few Spartan arms going up to try to signify, hey, it went over the line. But I think we have good enough view here to say it just was right in front of it. And now Lair with a long pass up ahead. Does connect. And that's Jacob Hauser. And he gets it right back. And goes the other way. That's Garrett Moore. And the old hidden ball trick there with Ty Tom. Hauser goes down, and the Spartans cause the turnover. Off to the races goes A.J. Pascarella across the Flagler line. A nice pass, and that misses, however, intended for Jonathan Crocker. And so possession back to Flagler. 3.36 to go in the third quarter. Just toes the line on the far side and keeps it in play. And now connecting at midfield, Garrett Moore on the run. Moore with a pass up ahead. And working defensively, Kevin Stiff for UT as it's sent over for Trace McDonald. And now he gives it to Tom. Ty Tom will be watched by Pascarella. And Tom directly behind the Spartan net. Up top it goes, now the other side. And the Saints trying to get a shot off here. 25 still on the shot clock, now they do. And it looked like Ulmer might have gotten a piece of that one that slowed it up. And a whistle stops play. And I don't see a flag. I think here just both teams making changes. They were getting a little rough behind the net, but I think the refs just clearly said, well, it's Flagler's ball, but we don't think anything's worthy of a penalty on that play. Do you have a oh, reset actually, of the shot clock? 
I was about to say, I thought I did see someone kneeling for the Spartans. So, I, yeah, there is a penalty, actually. And there is a flag now. It's 52, I believe. Yeah, so Kevin Stiff will be gone for one minute. Scoreboard reads 54 for that, but it is the 52 of Kevin Stiff. Yeah, I was looking in the area of play where the overwhelming majority of the action and the players were, and the flag was actually way out near midfield. And so Flagler with the extra man now. And the Spartans, however, able to cause a turnover. Hold on. And the official right there as Conley Stone lost it. And so possession remains with Flagler. Up top with it now. Long shot coming, and that one goes out of play. 18 seconds left in the Tampa penalty. This is McDonald, and a quick pass. Shot scores. A long shot by Garrett McNulty. And it is with the extra man as there's still 11 seconds left in the penalty against Kevin Stiff. So Flagler finally able to utilize the extra man the way they should. They definitely did. They saw the Spartans were defending pretty close to the net with two players right on the posts. And they said, hey, let's try a long shot. And Garrett Minolti was able to find it. And plenty of whistles on that faceoff as the official who was right there governing it Awards possession to UT. Aiden Kassara with it. And this is Grant Green as J.B. Clark is starting to, I don't want to say empty the bench, but empty the bench. Evan Gibbs with it now across the Flagler line. Gibbs carries on to the far corner. And that's Josh Galea. Galea in behind the Flagler net. A bounce pass and a shot coming there. Scores. Tate Watts. Yeah, incredible play there for Watts. The freshman from Louisville, Kentucky. He actually nutmegs the goalie there with that shot. Gets it between his legs. Or in hockey, you'd call that the five hole. I'm not as good with lacrosse terminology. Is it 5-4 or just a different term for shots like that? I'm busy looking at the roster to see if he's the tallest player. He's six foot five. They do have Ryan Kindle, who's also 6'5". Look in the well, rest of it. I believe he is tied Gunner for tallest. Gunnar Geblin as well. But how about that for the freshman from Louisville, Tate Watts, as the Spartans lead 19-6. And that's one way to get comfortable into college of lacrosse right away is getting an opportunity here in the th team's third game of the season. I'd have to double check if he scored in the previous home win or the opener for uh, the season. But uh, if not, that could be his first goal as a Spartan, which would be great to see. And I'll quickly double check. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Flagler working offensively. There's a pass and an opportunity to shot scores. And I believe that's Dylan Wilson who gets the goal for the visitors as the Saints answer right back. Great job at the Saints there. They're doing a little bit better on offense, finding more opportunities. And to get you an answer for Watt earlier, that is his second goal as a Spartan. He did score earlier in the campaign. And so Ethan Toshef and Jake Griffin will go head to head on the face-off again. Still battling, and now coming out of the pack with it, Aiden Kassara, 15 seconds left in the quarter, and quickly looking up at the scoreboard was Josh Galea, sends a pass over to Tate Watts, and gonna need to shoot right away, and they do, and Lair able to make the stop on the last second attempt by Kellen Hoke.
But the third quarter comes to a close. The Spartans in a comfortable 12-goal lead, 19-7. to We'll be back with the fourth quarter on tampaspartans.tv. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. And just like that, we're ready to start the fourth quarter. As the teams have changed ends, Spartans will now be going left to right. And they have a big 12 goal cushion. They are currently out shooting Flagler 36 to 17 and have won 22 of the game's 28 faceoffs. As you see, the Spartans working on offense here yet again. And that's Tate Watts. Up top now, Grant Green. Green fires it into the corner. Now Watts on the far side. And it's sent over now to Green once again. And Grant Green trying to shake off a check, hits a shot, hits the goal post. Spartans pick up the rebound. Hoke sending it over for Evan Gibbs. And now back to Hoke again. Quickly they move it in behind the Flagler net and over to the other side of the field. In front of their own sideline. That was Gibbs. And now that's Green. 35 on the shot clock. Evan Gibbs has a good look, scores! A great play there for Evan Gibbs, the freshman from Aurora, Colorado. He's not as tall as uh, Watts, but at 6'2", he's got a strong body, and he's able to find the open opportunity and fire it top corner to give the Spartans their 20th of the game. UT with a commanding 13-goal lead. As we await this faceoff at midfield, Jake Griffin out there for Flagler going toe to toe with Ethan Toshef. And Griffin comes out of the pack with it, fights his way through. Five foot nine, 205 pounds. And we've seen Jake Griffin be a workhorse on a couple of goals for the visitors. Not to mention all the work that he's had in the face-off circle. Even though the Spartans do lead in that category, Flagler has been very aggressive, always getting physical and making sure the Spartans usually don't get a lot of easy breaks from it, but sometimes the Spartans find a way. Nice spin move there. And UT, by the way, has made a goaltending change as Michael Lapointe is now in goal for the home team. I think it's good to get LaPointe, I think, a little bit of action here for the fourth quarter because, you know, you can always trust Blake Ulmer in the net, but if something were to happen, you need to make sure your other goalies are sharp and ready to take the net if they have to. 
And in the home opener the other day against Wilmington, we saw Ulmer start. LaPointe came in in relief. And then even Chase Taylor got some playing time between the pipes as the Spartans sent it over to the far side of the field. A little spin move there by Jonathan Crocker. And now up top of it goes Ethan Paduch. Now in behind the flag lunette. Paduch looks for an open teammate. And he gets the ball once again. A quick pass and a shot coming. They score. Jonathan Crocker gets the goal. And that's a rude welcome to the game to Mitchell Evans, who had taken over in goal for Flagler as UT continues to pour it on. That's a trial by fire, I think, as you'd call it right there. Spartans with a well-worked attack and a great shot to get by Evans. And I'll say, I know he'll be excited to get game time, but that's probably not how he wanted one of the first possessions to go for himself. Spartans now lead by 14, as it looks like Flagler will get the possession after a foul on the opening faceoff. So I think at this point, Flagler has decided Nate Laird did a good job, but it's time to give Mitchell Evans a look. I think in a similar way that J.B. Clark is, Flagler has a chance to give some of their younger players a chance in a game where... There's very low stakes. It's already, I think, relatively decided. Give some players a chance to try to shine and get extra action off the bench. And yeah, nice work there. That's Flagler working offensively. There's a bounce shot, and it looked like LaPointe might have gotten a piece of that one. And the Saints continue working offensively from the far side of the field and down to the ground and there to take it away was Kevin Stiff. And that's just a sign of the way that this game has gone for the Spartans. Everything has broken their way as Aiden Kassara crosses midfield. Kassara with a pass up ahead. And that's Kellen Hoke. Galea pushes it behind the net. Galea with a pass up top. And now quickly over to the other side. That's Evan Gibbs with it. Grant Green across the flagler line. Green with a little bit of room to work. Sends a pass into the corner. Oh, a nice spin move and a great save there by Mitchell Evans. And now Flagler starting out of their own end. Hold on, taken away. Here's an opportunity for the Spartans. And there's a shot coming. They score. Josh Galea scores on the turnover. And the route continues as UT goes up 22-7. That goal there, Galea, just a great read. He saw a broken play as Flagler was trying to get it out of their defensive third. He finds a loose puck. He says, eh, thank you, I'll take that. And he's able to work one-on-one -on -one down the field, gets by a defender, finds the space, and fires it into the back of the net. That's the 22nd goal of the game. And the Spartans take a 15-goal lead. Galea, who already had an assist, now has himself a multi-point game. And this is him with the ball again. Has some room to work. And finally the defender catches up with him and gives it to Kellen Hoke. And this is Grant Green. Looking over to the far side, sends it to Evan Gibbs. And Watts sends it behind the net. They move it over to this side of the field. And up top, cross it goes once again to Evan Gibbs. And look out, it was bobbled by Green. And Hoke has it now for the Spartans. 
Galea puts his shoulder down. He goes down, and Hoke can't get to it. Loose ball. And the officials there to award possession to Flagler. And how about that? As Luke Kane gave in to the check from Nikki Palermo. Great job by Palermo to get physical and force the loose ball. And the Spartans are able to regain possession. Evan Gibbs over for Galea. Josh Galea, one of those many underclassmen that I talked about earlier. He is one of 17 sophomores. And as I mentioned before, there are 16 freshmen in the Spartans lineup. And that's Gibbs. Gibbs goes down, comes back up, pass in front. And Watts couldn't pull it down. And Flagler. And look at that, the goaltender, Mitchell Evans, all the way down to the restraining line. And Evans, there's nobody in the Flagler net with him being on the wrong side of midfield. And a call there against Flagler. In soccer, Manuel Neuer was known as a sweeper keeper, liking to play up the field and help distribute to the defense. Well, that would be an attacking keeper there, what Evans was doing. He was getting all the way up into the attacking third uh, on that possession. And the <laughs> the Saints had a foul once the possession was regained by the Spartans because that, that's about to become a very uh, dangerous spot if Evans can't get back in time. That was Morgan Thielke. This is him with it now. Over for Robert Pilla. Pilla sends a pass into the corner. Kellen Hoke with it now. And back to Thielke. Quickly they go to Josh Galea. Galea looks over the defender and gives it to Tate Watts instead. Watts from near the back line. And Watts sends a pass in front. And I think they were trying for the quick stick with Galea. But you see Flagler taking it away. Now it's 6.38 to go. The Saints going back on offense. Willie Bateman. Bateman on the run and hustling back was Brad Lennard defensively for UT. And Colton Reynolds now for the visitors. Sent into the far corner. And that's Bateman. Quick pass. For Davis Campbell. Reynolds up top. And Dylan Wilson sends it over. Loose ball. And picked up there by Aiden Kassara. On the run for UT. And Kassara puts on the brakes. And drops a pass back for Nikki Palermo. Who checks his sidelines. Knowing that they're going to be making changes. Robert Pilla slows it down. Jonathan Crocker with it now for UT over for Galea. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. A 15-goal Spartan lead. And this is Jonathan Crocker. Into the corner, Galea pushes it over. Back up top now for Ethan Paduch. Five minutes exactly remain as the Spartans will start the season 3-0. They will remain home and play on Sunday at 12 noon against number four, Lenore Ryan. And there's one that gets away and the shot clock expires. game at Lenore Ryan I think will be an interesting one to watch over the weekend because Lenore Ryan one of the top five teams in the nation 
It'll be great to see two national powerhouses going up against each other. Could even very well be a prelude to a potential tournament match later in the spring. Yeah, that's actually a neutral site game being played in Savannah, Georgia on Sunday. As you see the ball being put back into play by the Saints from the near corner. And in behind the Spartans net is Willie Bateman. Bateman spins, takes a shot. And nice stop there by Mike LaPointe. Away goes UT. And there goes a pass up ahead to Drew Godfrey. Kristen Sacchini. And over now for Aiden Safuni. Robert Pella. These are all names that I was calling in the latter stages of the game a few days ago. The home opener, the win against Wilmington. As J.B. Clark has, in fact, Made sure to give opportunities to just about everybody up and down the lineup today. I know some of these players, they might just be sophomore and freshmen now. They could be the stars within two to three seasons' time where they'll be the ones that are playing from start to finish in most games. And that's Sacchini. Up top, they send it over to the other side. And there's a shot coming, goes wide and out of play off the stick of Jonathan Crocker. 2.43 to go here in the game as Safuni sends a pass over and there's a shot taken by Drew Godfrey and the Spartans still in possession here in a fresh shot clock. And that one will go out of play. And so Flagler trailing 22 to 7 and they are going to fall to 1 and 2 as they're on the Spartan side of midfield and now over the Tampa line nifty move there and a pass and it goes in behind the UT net and exactly 2 minutes left in the game now Mentioned Flagler probably going to go to one and two. It's not a great start, but I know they'll be excited with one win early on. Last year they went three and 14 as a program. And taking one of the first three can be a good start for signs of improvement oh. after a great save there. Great save by LaPointe on the shot by Davis Campbell. Now I think Flagler probably would have loved to at least gotten to double digits today, which... Barring a miracle, I don't know that they're going to get three goals in less than 90 seconds. It's not going to happen. But if you want to be the best, you got to at least see how you how you compete against the best. And they saw today why the Spartans are the reigning national champions. Very one-sided game. As this is Robert Pilla with it for UT. And down to exactly 60 seconds remaining. In behind the Flagler net. And UT likely will just use up the entire shot clock. There's a differential of about 14 seconds. And pass in front. And you see there, Christian Sacchini could have shot. As you see, Aiden Safuni look up at the game clock. 15 on the shot clock now. Robert Pilla, that one goes out of play. Eight seconds on the shot clock, 22 left in the game. And Drew Godfrey puts it into play. And he's content to let the shot clock expire as there's 13 seconds left in the game. And Flagler, let's see if they get one more shot off here. 
before time expires. They cross midfield. And they will not. As the horn goes to end the game and the Spartans victorious by a big 22 to seven score. And UT stays perfect on the 2023 season as they are now three and O. Oh. And Taylor, as you mentioned, a tough defeat for Flagler, but. But it's early in the season. And of course, Flagler entered the game knowing they're facing one of the best teams in the country, knowing that as a program, they probably aren't expecting to be one of the best teams, but they should be happy that they were able to keep fighting. They were able to get seven goals. And sometimes you just need a game like this to get more practice because when they face their next opponent, it's going to be easier. They're not going to have to worry about facing off against a juggernaut like Tampa. Their next opponent, when they play a little bit later this week, will be Florida Tech. They'll be playing them on Saturday. So another ranked team, it'll be tricky, but they'll be hoping to do a little bit better. And hopefully this experience against the Spartans can help them out. Daniel Fitzpatrick finishes with four goals and one assist. For the Spartans, Owen Miller, two goals and five assists. So seven points for Miller in the victory. Canyon Birch with three goals and one assist. And it was all UT. They outshoot the visitors 41 to 18. And they won 24 of 32 faceoffs. So UT goes to 3-0. For Taylor Stolworthy, I'm Bruce Worsniak. 